Hello YouTube, today we're going to be talking a little bit more about double integrals and average value and how it can be applied both in single variable calculus and in multivariable. So, but first I want to start out with a quote, and the quote is, the master has failed more than the student has tried. Now keeping this in mind, it's saying that pretty much your teacher, your instructor, whoever's teaching you how to do something has failed more times than students have tried um, at the material. Um, so it just goes to show you um, just kind of that mentality. If you really want to become a master, you're just going to have to keep practicing and even fail um, so that you can get better and better. All right, so let's move on. So we're going to talk a little bit about integrals and Riemann sums for area, just kind of like the basic stuff. So if you have the area or the integral from a to b of f of t dt, um, the formula for Riemann sums is the limit as n approaches infinity. Um, and pretty much you're just going to be adding up um, an infinite number of rectangles. That's what the n approaches infinity, an infinite number of rectangles. Um, and there's that formula for the change in t. So I did a right Riemann sum, so this would be an overestimate. Notice how the rectangles go above the graph here. Um, but if you, um, you could use three rectangles or something to approximate this integral, you have an over-approximation if it's a right Riemann sum. You can have as many as I show here, um, which is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine um, rectangles. You could approximate it as well. It'd still be closer than three or four. Um, but if you have infinite, you would get the pretty much exact area under that curve. Um, remember, you're doing you're adding up an infinite number of things or rectangles. Um, so now, what we do for volume? What are Riemann sums in terms of volume? Well, now we're going to be using double integrals um, for the same thing here. Um, don't get like freak out, you know, like it's the same thing, it's saying the same thing, the limit as n or m and n approach infinity, so that means we're not dealing with just squares or rectangles anymore, we're dealing with cubes or rectangular prisms, um, so that's what we're going to be adding up, not uh, rectangles but rather rectangular prisms, so I'm going to try to draw it as best as I can here, um, so I drew a three-dimensional surface, kind of like a maybe a piece of paper floating in the wind at frozen at a specific point in time, and you want to find the area or the volume, excuse me, under that uh, curve. Maybe it's a slide and it's a solid slide or a part of a hill, and you want to know how much is underneath when you, I don't know, something. But notice how I drew that um, red rectangular prism there. You'd be adding up an infinite number of those. Um, to calculate the volume. So the same concepts apply really from single variable calculus. So if you really have a good foundation on that, then multivariable, um, especially when we get to vector calculus portions, it's going to be so much easier for you if you really understand your basics. So now let's move over here um, talking about areas as double integrals. So I'm going to pose a question to you. Very simple. You have a, uh, excuse me, a rectangle here. What's the formula for that? Uh, that's area equals a times b. Um, just kind of, you know, your formula length times width. Um, also, if I had a fixed uh, three-dimensional object with a volume, or excuse me, with a height of one, what would be the formula for volume? You'd do length times width times height, right? Or in this case, a times b times one. Um, but numerically, mathematically, these are the same numerical value. a times b and a times b would have the same value. However, the difference only is in the units. This would be, say, in uh, on the area on the left could be in meters squared, and volume could be in meters cubed. Um, but the numerical value would be the same. Say it was uh, 3 times 2 would be 6. The volume would also be 6 here, but in different units. But mathematically, they have the same numerical value. So how does that apply here when we're dealing with three-dimensional objects? Well, if we had a fixed height um, of 1 as well for a three-dimensional object, um, the volume it's, we would be the double integral, so if area is a single integral, double integral would be volume, and it would be the same as the area um, for finding the area. And You can use a single integral to find the area, um, or you could use a double integral with a constant as uh, that um, portion there. So it's showing that the area and the volume are the same when you have a fixed height of 1. So now, let's do a little bit of other cool basic stuff that I thought was cool how it relates to geometry. So you have a triangle here, um, and let's label the sides. So you have B and H. So what would be the equation of the line for the hypotenuse of this triangle? It's not going to be like Y equals X, but it's going to have a constant in front of it. What's that constant? Depends on the slope. So it's um, H over BX, rise over run X. Kind of that's, that's what slope is, right? 
Um, so there's your equation in terms of variables of that line. And you know the traditional formula for a triangle, area of a triangle is half the base times the height. So in terms of calculus, um, you can evaluate it like this using the area. You can uh, determine the limits of integration. You would be starting from zero, which is the far left, or the origin, um, by the y-axis. Excuse me, the x-axis. So x equals zero all the way to x equals b, the end of it. And then you would do from the low, so y equals zero, all the way to the top up there, which is h over b x. So that would be the equation for y equals. Um, and you can evaluate that integral um, simply using the fundamental theorem of calculus, h over bx minus 0, um, using that first part there. But you still have to separate or deal with that last portion of the integral. And then you evaluate that by doing um, cap or f of b minus f of a. Again, fundamental theorem of calculus, and you evaluate using those limits of integration. And check that out. You actually get half the base times the height. So you just kind of proved um, the area for a triangle using calculus. So that's pretty cool. Um, how you did that there. I just thought it was kind of a cool thing to show. Um, so now let's talk about average value. So we call that average value if you're given this uh, function here in the area and you want to find the average value of this function on this closed interval, um, you simply take the area and divide it by the uh, difference between the two points um, that you're looking at. So in other words, it's area over uh, the region. And you can also write this um, in terms of, because uh, the, just the basic integral of a to b dx would be the same thing as b minus a, because using the fundamental theorem of calculus. So if we rewrite it like that, kind of have that in mind as we approach a three-dimensional problem now. So um, now we have this three-dimensional object. We want to find the average value for volume, and we have this formula as a result. So you have the double integral, um, which would be, uh, the volume of this figure here over the double integral of the area that of that region R down there in blue. Um, so that's kind of the same thing. So instead of being, it's very similar, just kind of related to regular for single variable calculus. So instead of being B minus A, like that region is just a closed interval, like uh, in a line, now the closed interval is an area. So that's in the denominator for both instead now. And the numerator, rather than being an area in single variable, it's going to be volume in multivariable. In other words, you're going to divide by the dimension that's one less than when finding the average value. So a three-dimensional object divided by a two-dimensional object is on the bottom of the formula here. In the first formula, we took a two-dimensional object divided by, by a single-dimensional um, area as well, or object, I should say. So that's pretty much average value for you. This was kind of just conceptual stuff to get you guys thinking. I uh, hope it helped, and happy studying.